hello everyone welcome back to the channel so in today's video i'll be showing you how you can save the total amount of time a player spends in a scene or in a group of scenes and then display to your player in a different scene so this is something we see in a lot of games where the time spent in stages are saved and then displayed to you at the end so in this video i'll show you how to do that so this is a tutorial request if you have any tutorial requests you can leave it in the comments below okay so let's begin the first thing you want to do is open up to develop 5 where we have it open now so next thing is let's open up our project manager so here you can see we have three stages stage one stage two and our finish scene would we'll go through these stages one after the other so and you can also see we have this extension installed it's the time format extension you need this installed to be able to carry this out so what you do is install this extension you can do that by clicking on the search for new extensions and then typing in time for matter and installing it so once you have that installed you should see this extension displayed here now let's go into our stage one so this is what the stage one for this tutorial looks like here we have our player our player hits box the platform for our players to walk on we have the third castle platform which is the exit from this stage we also have the time object which is this text it's the time object is a text so we have this and once we open this you can see the initial text to display is set to time okay apply this now let's go into our new stage one event so here we have the basic events for player movement this has to do with hiding the player hits box and positioning the player at the center of the player hits box playing sounds once the player jumps setting animations flipping our player horizontally and changing the camera positions follow the player so let's close that and here you can see in this group we have once the player is in collision with the third cl castle platform which is this it changes the scene to the stage two so these are the events we have placed now the next thing you do now is we need to add a sub condition you can do that by right clicking sorry clicking on this right here add a sub event and on the time so for the conditions we need to get a timer condition to do that you add a condition and then let's search for timer it's a scene timer so as you can see value of a scene timer let's like that time in seconds one second so the timer's name would be since we're in stage one we'd name this stage one uh, let's give it an underscore stage one timer then let's hit ok so we have that and once it's greater than one second we need to create a variable to store data in now the variable would be a global variable since we want this to be accessed from all the scenes keep in mind scenes variable only work in that particular scene while global variables work across all scenes in your gdevelop game so for this we'd use a global variable so add an action and let's get a global variable um here we go value of a global variable so the variable name would be stage one underscore timer in order to avoid confusions we'll change our timer's name from stage one timer to time so just set that to time and so once the timer time is greater than one second change the global variable which is the name this would add one to it and then reset the timer time so reset reset a scene timer which is time okay so we have this now we need to get 
our text object which is time we need to modify the text object to display what is stored in our scene variable so to do this let's add a new event let's add an action and then modify a text modify the text the text name is time the sign is set to and the value would be our time formatter there we go time formatter second to our two minutes second so you select that and then let's get our global variable which is here we go global variable and now we need to get the name of our global variable which is stage one underscore timer then let's close that okay so now that's all the events we need for stage one a quick summary of all this is that once the timer time is greater than one second it will change the global variable which is stage one timer by adding one to it it would also reset the timer so it moves in a continuous loop now in this event this would, it would modify it and set it to our stage one timer now what happens here is that the time formatter would format the value of our stage one timer to display it like a time so that's what basically happens there and okay so let's copy this you can do that by selecting your first event hold down shift and select the next event right click copy and let's go into our stage 2 stage 2 events and so here we'll place this here so let's add a new sub event and then let's paste that now we'll change the values here so I'll drag this down and the timer time we can leave this as time since this is a scene timer so it would only work in this um, scene so the timer time is greater than one second change the global variable let's set this to stage two timer so now we're creating a new global variable stage two timer and reset the time reset the timer time so change the text of time to our global variable stage two timer so let's go into our stage two and it's still the same events with our stage it's still the same object we have in our stage one that we have in our stage two so let's go into our finish stage so in our finish let's head into our finish event so in our finish events we have this event which basically centers the time object you would set this to the center okay so in our events let's add a new event i'll place this above this so add a condition at the beginning of the scene now we need to get the two global variables which is stage one timer and stage two timer so we'll get these two global variables then add them together so here add an action let's add variable value of a um, global variable there we go value of a global variable variable total so here we can give this we can make this variable a scene variable since we're only using it in this scene or you can make a global variable when you're using the um, value of these two scores in another scene so for this i would be using a global variable so for the variable total sign set to value let's get our global variable global variable variable name stage one timer close that and add a plus sign global variable stage one stage two underscore timer there we go so we can hit okay and this will get the two variables add a new events and add an action let's select our time objects and we need to modify the text this would display the value so sign um for the value i want it to display total so total and colon space plus um let's get a format let's time sorry plus time for mother there we go time for mother and we can get the 
global variable which we created, global variable, and then total. Okay, let's close that and we're good to go. Okay, so that's it. That's all you need to create this. Now let's preview it. And there we go. So as you can see, the timer is working here. And once we're in collision, it saves that score. This is our state 2 now. And it saves this score. Then in the final stage, it adds both scores. And that's the total time is spent um, playing both of the stages. So there you go. That's how you can create. You can add this um, system, this mechanism to your game. I'm sure it will be a great addition to your game. And so that's it. And once again, if you have a tutorial request, you can leave a comment in the description of this video or any of my videos, and I'll create a tutorial on it. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe to the channel for more videos, and share with everyone. So there you have it, and thanks for watching. See you guys in my next tutorial.